And I believe there's a demo vehicle. No, there's not. That would be on the uh, on the Varus that the demo for the scan tool. So you know what? Let's just stay with where with what we were on. And as far as selecting a vehicle, let's stay where we're at. Everybody's still on the Cadillac 2006 CTS. If you're not, if you changed it, what you should be able to do is go to your previous vehicles, although that may not show up because that was the default when we up, updated these this morning. Okay, there it is right there. As far as how many it holds in memory, this is something that was on the exam that you might want to remember, not my exam, but Snap-ons. The Solus Pro holds 25 vehicles in memory. This one is probably close to that too. I'm not totally sure. Uh, I'm sure you could find it under the help section or whatever, but I believe it's, I believe it's 25. Could be wrong on that. To me, I, I don't care. Maybe the last three or four vehicles is all I would need. If you think about it, when are you ever going to go back 20 vehicles it's just, just load it back up again. It's just a couple of extra buttons. So it's not that big of a deal. And let's, uh, let's go into our component test and let me introduce this to you before we take a break. So hit yes on the component test meter. And what I want you guys to understand about this tool is this tool changed my life between my third and fourth year in the field. Now it wasn't the Vantage Pro at the time, it was called Advantage, and they're not cheap, but the amount of information that's in this tool is unbelievable. What we are looking at is a list of components on this 2006 Cadillac CTS 3.7 VIN, 3.6, sorry, VIN 7 engine. This is unique to this vehicle, year, make, model, engine size. So if I pick my crankshaft position sensor, CKP, and hit yes, it gives me tests and component information, hit yes again. And if you look, we have an operation box to the left and we can scroll down to each of these. If we scroll up and down, left and right, we can get to the boxes and then hit yes. So under the operation, hit yes, and it opens that box up and we can scroll down further. It tells me a little bit about this sensor and I'm looking faster here. It's an analog signal, so it's going to produce its own voltage. Information about the sensor, how many teeth it has. And it says the ECM can determine which pair of cylinders is approaching top dead center based on the crank alone. That's some pretty good information. Hit no to close that box, arrow over to the right, and it gives me the connector. And low reference would be a ground. We'll learn that as we go here in this class. And then the crank signal. And it also gives me the wire color on the car, which is not always like that, but that's pretty cool. And then it's viewed harness side back probing the connector. What's that mean? We're plugged in, looking at the back side of the connector. Harness side is which side? Harness side would be computer side. If we have a crank sensor here, we have a connector. This is the harness side. Harness side would be the side that attaches to the engine computer. It never leaves the car. The harness side is the side that stays in the car. Harness side, this would be sensor side. So if we're going to view this harness side back probing, it gave us a connector and two terminals. Do you guys understand that we're looking at this from this angle? Why is that important? Well, if A is here and B is here, if you're looking at it at the wrong angle, doesn't that mix up A and B? Harness side back probing would be you're taking a T-pin or something and you're back probing the connector 
like that. Plugged in harness side back probing. Come back to the tool. And I love this. Hit no, come down here, location. That's awesome. Think about this, guys. Car comes in and you want to check this crank sensor. How much information do you have at your fingertips if you have this tool on this one year make model engine car? All right, what you'll find in our field is people sell these all the time on eBay. And the reason they sell them is they find out after they buy it that it's not a scan tool. What is this tool? This tool is what you break out after you've scanned the car and got direction. Let's talk about some terminology and then I'll let you guys take a break. When do we use the Snap-on Vantage Pro? Snap-on calls this a front door tool. You want to remember this, it'll be on your Snap-on exam. Snap-on's name for their scope, a scope, which is our, our, Van, our Vantage Pro, uh, the Varus, the modus, I think I spelled that right. Uh, then there's the, the Vantage Ultra, the Varus Pro, the Modus Ultra, I don't get into all that. The scope is a front door tool. And something else you want to remember is a scope will show it shows the cause. It shows cause. Where a scanner, scanner or scan tool, which would be the Solus Pro for us, Solus Pro, Solus Ultra, Varus, I want to get these confused. Notice the Varus modus have both scope and scan tool in them. Solus Pro or Solus Ultra is a backdoor tool. This is Snap-on's name. Backdoor tool. And it shows effect. Something you want to remember for your test. Cause and effect. In other words, you read a trouble code on a vehicle, say it's a, an EGR flow trouble code, does that mean you need an EGR valve? Did somebody say yes? I was going to say, if you said yes, if it was that easy to read a code and change a part, what are you doing in this class? You're wasting your money, I'll tell you that. It's not that easy. Do we have direction with the scan tool? The scan tool, we can think of the scan tool or scanner as a, a map. And when we start reading the map, we have a compass and we're looking for direction and where we're going. That's the scan tool. It shows us effect, symptoms, codes, effect we read with the scan tool, which is a backdoor tool. And so we go now uh, with an EGR flow code. We go up under the hood. We start checking the EGR valve or system. It may have a position sensor on the valve or a solenoid that controls it. What tool are we now using? I'm not using the scan tool anymore. I'm using the scope. Okay, so the scanner backdoor tool, where are we connecting this? It's connected to the DLC. What's the DLC? Data link connector. That's what you do with the scan tool. You will not connect the Vantage Pro to the data link connector to read trouble codes. I, I, I was going to say ever, but that would be a lie because some older systems, I'm thinking of a video I did, it was on a, on a it wasn't a Mitsubishi Eclipse, it was a, a Dodge Avenger, which is basically a Mitsubishi setup. 
older system 95 or 94, to get codes out of that, what you did is you connected to the data link connector, it was a specific data link connector, it wasn't the OBD2 or one you guys are familiar with. What you did is you connected your scope up to two certain pins, and then you would read the trouble codes in the form of zeros and ones, highs and lows, and so a code 11 would look, look like this on your scope. The fat ones were tens, and the skinny ones were ones, that would be a code 11. And we would see this on the screen. That was how you got trouble codes out of that system. Yesterday when we were messing with that old DM and I tried to get flash codes out of it by jumping the data link connector, it's essentially flash codes. We're watching the flashing of a check engine light. How many of us know about that that was able to be done on older cars? Good, so I'm not speaking Greek to you right now then. We could get flash codes out of cars. This is a circumstance where I could get, quote, flash codes, but it was in the form of a waveform. How was this done before they made digital storage oscilloscopes? They would tell you to use an analog voltmeter. Why an analog voltmeter? A digital voltmeter isn't fast enough to see these signals. An analog voltmeter, you could read the sweeps of the needle. So that was how it was done back in the day. So for me to say the scope is never connected to the data link connector, do you see where I pause now? But do you understand we're not connecting the Vantage to the data link connector and reading trouble codes and reading data from the engine computer. We're not. That's not what this tool is for. This is a component test meter front door tool. It's a scope. We're connected directly to the components. Front door tool, this is exactly what the tool says. It is a component, it's a component test meter. You want to check the crank sensor? We just went over that. You're probably, not probably, let, let's back up for a second. Are you going to pull the car in and immediately know you need to check the crank sensor? Uh, not unless you have a magic wand. We used something else to put us in that direction. What was it? Maybe it was a trouble code. Connect the scan tool, we read a code, it said crankshaft position sensor. So now we're not sure the sensor's faulty or not. Could be wiring, could be sensor, could be computer. We need to go check it, right? So we take this tool now and we go check the sensor. That'd be one scenario. Another one would be the car doesn't start. Well, what are we missing? So we start checking spark and fuel and compression and we find we're missing spark. And we learn about ignition systems and we know that ignition systems need inputs for spark to occur and we decide we want to start by checking the crank sensor. That'd be a great starting point. But do you see it took steps to get to that point? And now we're in the tool. Where's the crank sensor live? What kind of crank sensor is it? What kind of signal does it make? How do I check it? What scales do I set this tool up for to see it. That's what this tool does. I'm going to hit no from here, go down to tests, hit yes, and I want to show you the crank test and then I'm going to let you break. I just want you to see that what's in here is a reference waveform. So let me say that again. Where are we? Car doesn't start. We don't have spark. Pretty sure we want to check this first. It tells us where it lives, what kind of sensor it is, how to connect our scope, and it gives me a reference waveform. And it sets the scales up for me with the right time base and the right voltage scales. Let me hit yes on that and back up a second. Notice it tells me where to connect my yellow and black test leads to right to sensor positive and negative. Now, if you didn't update it, you would have to... Good question. Good question. If we didn't update this tool, would we have this information? Well, this is a 2006 Cadillac, and our last update before we did this was 11 something. I would have still had this information. But you are correct. We get up to a certain year, we won't have that information. So do you, do you understand maybe a little bit about what you're paying for when you buy the updates on this tool? You're getting more and more car information. Uh, one of the things I didn't do is see 
how far or how new we are right now, we can do that after break. I, I want to stay on this crank sensor for a minute because we have uh, a little bit more to talk about within here, but I'm going to let you guys take a break first. So go ahead and do that.